This training module describes the length and slope of the main channel that are used to calculate hydrograph timing variables. This is training module 2.05a for the stochastic empirical loading and dilution model seldom. This presentation has 19 slides and will take about 9 minutes. It was prepared by the U.S. Geological Survey in cooperation with the Federal Highway Administration. This training module has five learning objectives. At the end of this module, you should be able to describe the basin length and basin slope, explain why timing variables are important, describe the process for deriving the length and slope, describe methods for obtaining the length and 1085 slope from stream stats, and discuss considerations for calculating the length and slope of highway drainage systems. This presentation is a brief overview of the technical details for estimating the basin length and slope for runoff quality analyses. Please see U.S. Geological Survey Scientific Investigations Report 2012-5110 for more details. The basin length and mean basin slope are measured along the main channel. This is a schematic diagram of a basin with a map view and a cross section showing the main channel length and the mean basin slope. In seldom, these same basin properties are used to define the characteristics of the highway site and the upstream basin. The basin length, also known as the main channel length, is the total distance in miles from the point of interest to the highest point on the basin boundary following the main channel route. The basin length may be much longer than the straight line length between the point of interest and the selected point on the basin divide if the channel is sinuous. The mean basin slope, also known as the main channel slope, is the average slope of the main channel of the stream upstream from the point of interest. The mean basin slope selected for seldom analyses is known as the 1085 slope because it is calculated by determining the locations and elevations of points at 10% and 85% along the main channel from the point of interest to the basin divide, then dividing the difference in elevation in feet by the distance in miles between these points. The length and slope are important because they determine the timing of runoff from the basin. This is a schematic diagram showing the variables that define a triangular runoff hydrograph. The total duration of the hydrograph from the beginning time to the end time is known as the base time, TB. There are two parts to a triangular hydrograph, the rising limb and the falling limb. The duration of the rising limb is known as the time to peak, TP. The duration of the falling limb is the recession time, TF. The basin lag time, BL, is the fundamental timing variable for a given site. The basin lag time is defined as the time between the center of mass of the unit rainfall and the center of mass of the associated runoff. The basin lag time is commonly defined as a characteristic of the drainage basin rather than a characteristic of a storm event. The basin length and slope are good predictors for the basin lag time. This graph is a scatter plot showing the basin lag time data from 896 sites across the United States and regression equations developed using the basin lag time, the basin lag factor, and the total impervious area in percent measured at these sites. The vertical axis is the basin lag time in hours on a logarithmic scale. The horizontal axis is the basin lag factor, which is the basin length in miles divided by the square root of the basin slope in feet per mile, which is also on a logarithmic scale. This graph indicates that the basin lag time increases by a factor of 4 when the basin lag factor increases by an order of magnitude. This graph indicates that for a given value of length and slope, increasing the total impervious area percentage from 0 to 100% reduces the basin lag time by a factor of 7.7 .7 times. This hypothetical figure shows the importance of simulating the timing of storm flows within a runoff event. The diagram on the left shows the runoff hydrograph from a basin upstream of a site of interest and two potential hydrographs from that site. The hypothetical graph on the right shows the cumulative percentage of total upstream storm flow that occurs as the storm progresses. The diagram shows two potential runoff hydrographs from the site of interest, one with a short duration, duration one, and the other with a longer duration, duration two. In this example, only 15% of upstream storm flow occurs during duration one, and about 55% occurs during duration two. The basin lengths and slopes may affect the outcome of simulations by controlling the basin lag time. The first step in the process is to delineate the basin and identify the main channel. This image shows the contributing area from a small tributary to the Verde River at Pinto Mesa in New Mexico, where it crosses Interstate 17. Measure the main channel length along the path of the channel from the basin outlet above the highway to the basin divide on Juniper Hill. In this case, the distance along the stream between these points is 1.44 miles. Identify the points that are at locations along the stream at 10% and 85% of the main channel length. 
measure the distance along the main channel path. In this case, the distance between these points is 1.08 miles. Next, estimate or interpolate the elevations at each point from the topographic contours on the map. In this case, the 85% point is at about 5,060 feet, and the 10% point is at about 4,481 feet. The slope is the difference in elevation divided by the difference in length between the 10 and 85 points. The slope is always positive, so the StreamStats measurement tool distances must be reversed so that the outlet is at zero and the maximum is at the watershed divide. The tributary at Pinto Mesa has a slope of about 536 feet per mile. The USGS StreamStats tool can be used to estimate length and slope. This is an image showing the online viewer. To calculate the slope, zoom to the site of interest, use the basin delineation tool to click on the stream at the point of interest, and use the StreamStats basin tools or exploration tools to calculate the length and elevations along the stream. In many states, the main channel length and 1085 slope is calculated by StreamStats for you. The seldom length variable is LFPLENGTH and the slope is CSL10 underscore 85 in StreamStats. There may be other length and slope variables, but these are the ones you want for seldom analyses. The main channel of the highway site may be on the pavement, in a swale, in a storm sewer, or through a catch basin outlet. These photographs show various components of highway runoff drainage systems. Use engineering judgment to select the flow lengths and slopes that will represent the timing of flows. This is a schematic diagram of the Federal Highway Research Site along Interstate 81 near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. A hypothetical drainage boundary is shown as a brown line. The catch basins, represented by squares, drain runoff from the road. The water is then piped to the monitoring location at the outfall to Pine Run. The main channel along the drainage system and up to the basin divide is identified as a blue line. The points, which are at 10 and 85% along the distance along the flow path, are shown as the green circles with the black crosshairs. The distance between these points is highlighted in gray. The length of the blue line would be the main channel length, and the slope would be a function of the difference in elevation between the selected points. This image shows two highway bridge decks as highway sites. The boundary delineating the drainage area on each bridge is shown as a yellow line. For a bridge with scuppers, the main channel length may be the distance from the crown of the road to the bridge deck drain along the curb. The main channel slope would be measured along the transverse slope of the deck at points at 10 and 85% along the flow path as shown by the X's in the image. If the bridge is drained by scuppers, the vertical drop to the river should not be used to calculate the length or slope of the drainage path. This site is a bridge over a river with a series of drainage slots. If the slots drain directly to the stream, the length and slope are calculated using the transverse bridge deck slope. If they drain to a pipe that carries a runoff to shore, then the length and slope would include those components of the drainage system. In this training module, we learn that the basin length is the length along the main channel to the basin divide, and the slope is the difference in elevation divided by the difference in length between points at 10% and 85% of the main channel distance. To derive the length and slope, identify the main channel, calculate the total length, identify points at 10% and 85% of the length measuring from the outlet, and calculate the slope by dividing the elevation by the distance between these two points. StreamStats will provide information needed to calculate the length and 1085 slope. In many states, these variables are calculated automatically. To calculate the length and slope of highway drainage systems, you must use professional judgment to identify the longest flow path and then calculate the length and slope.